Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time it is in any part of your world. I'm uh, 13 minutes late officially, so apologies to those who are here on the live stream. This is The Feedback Loop. Thank you for joining me once again here on uh, Studio Live today. This is our weekly live show, which usually starts on time and today didn't. I'm having a few uh, technical issues. This is where I need someone like Ponk80 around to uh, to help me troubleshoot my mixer. So I don't have any uh, ability to play back music or sound from my PC here, which is uh, unfortunate. So sorry about the delay, but uh, on the show today, we are uh, talking about uh, a bunch of different things. We've got, um, we've got, uh, let's see. I'm just checking my notes here. We're talking about haters and what you should, how you should manage that. So uh, we're talking about responding to feedback about your music and whether you should uh, hug your haters or maybe uh, do something different. Um, We're talking about um, gear versus creating music. So I've done a lot of videos this week about uh, music creation gear and we'll be talking about the importance of that, but the importance of actually getting on and making your music as well. Um, multi-channel interfaces has been something that a lot of people have been talking about this week, so the ability to record on multiple channels at the same time, and uh, time-bound goals. So I'm not only late on this stream here, but I am uh, a day late in doing my monthly song, and uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about why that is and uh, what's been happening in the last week. Thank you again for everyone who is here. If you could let me know that uh, that the stream is working well, that would be good because, uh, like I said, a few little small technical difficulties coming on in here today to get started. So I do apologize for that. Thank you to the folks who are here. Uh, Mr. Barry Smith, we've got Ponk80, we've got Cool Klein, and we've got uh, Leonard Higgins, L. Higgy Drums in here, Blaze Reeves, Darren Bryant and a bunch of other folks. So thank you all for for being here. If you do have questions as we go along, this show is all about you and it is for you. So uh, you can drop those questions in the comments as we go along here and I will make sure I read through those and chat about those. I I did have to get my coffee. So despite the the technical issues, because it is uh, 6.30 in the morning here, I did also need to at least have a coffee because... um, yeah, a little, little bit about, uh, about uh, well, not, not the reason that I was late here, but the reason I wasn't here uh, doing all my audio testing and checking a lot earlier is that um, it's a Christmas party season and I happen to have the Christmas party for my day job last night, hence why the voice is a little bit uh, <clears throat> like so. Um, that, uh, so yeah, that was a, an enjoyable time um, and I wasn't out late because uh, I'm an old man and I don't tend to go out and party hardy all night, but even so... You know, an 11 o'clock, 11.30 bedtime for me is still uh, fairly late in the grand scheme of things. All righty, let's get underway and let's start talking because uh, as uh, as I've been um, creating videos, creating music, uh, putting myself out there, putting my art out there for people to check out, uh, one thing that is definitely happening more and more is that people are giving me their feedback, which is both incredibly awesome um, and also a bit of a challenge at times. So 98% to 99% of people are super encouraging, are super supportive, uh, really, um, yeah, just they, they want to reinforce what's good and even people that give me uh, give me constructive criticism about my music about my videos about things that go on here are generally really good about it um, but there's a subset which uh, I've called haters here um, mostly because that's the word that's sort of thrown around and I recently read a book by Jay Bear um, which I do highly recommend it's a, a really good read it was called not surprisingly hug your haters which is what uh, I've titled this stream here today so that's what I'm talking about a little bit so the the question here is what should you do what should you actually do to respond to someone who is hating on you and to, to clarify that we probably need to talk about a little bit about the different types of haters that we have and the different types of people that and different types of comments that you may get because the way I kind of define a hater I guess is someone who 
is overly negative and probably either unjustified or is delivering feedback in a way that is sort of more hateful than it is useful and constructive. So if I release a song, and many of you are, are producers, are songwriters, are people who uh, people who actually put music out there, if you put music out there and someone says to you, oh, yeah, re- really good song, um, I thought maybe the chorus was a bit too long or I thought maybe um, yeah, the tuning of the guitar in the third part was not as good. Like there's there's ways that people are going to give you feedback, but a lot of the time, um, some of the feedback that's things like, uh, "Hey, dude, that sucked." <laughs> it's like, well, that's a that's a really tough one to come back from because it's like, um, what what don't you like about that? How can how can I do something better? So um, that that's the sort of thing that I'm talking about is people that are, yeah, just putting it out there and saying, um, "You suck," and you're doing the wrong thing. So. The question is, uh, and I guess the, the, the other thing to consider is that a lot of people are not only not good at giving feedback, but they're not good at receiving feedback. And uh, I've, I've noticed that about people who are likely to sort of hate on your music is that they're probably not the best people to actually receive feedback, let alone give feedback as well. So it's a kind of, uh, it's an ironic twist that, uh, yeah, the, the, the people that give the give it the worst uh, can't actually take it back in return, which, which is a little bit strange. So who are the types of different haters? And this is sort of the way I, I personally break it down. So there's the uh, personal attack hater. So this is uh, probably the least productive and the one that I don't tend to hug. Because what we mean by hug your haters is to respond positively or at least respond at all to someone. And I've got to tell you, I've, I haven't had too many people that have, uh, have thrown a personal attack out there in terms of the, the comments that they've put on my music or my videos. The, the rare occasion that it happens, yeah, I, I don't tend to respond. Um, I don't delete and ban unless people are getting really nasty. What I tend to do is uh, just sort of leave it there and then the rest of the community will either respond for me if it's somewhere on Facebook or if it's on YouTube or wherever. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's unlikely that I need to unless it's really offensive or offensive to someone else, which is very strange. When when, when, that, when sort of someone comes to your defense and then the hater sort of starts attacking them, yeah, that, that's when I sort of get involved and will delete and, and, uh, and remove people. But I think there's maybe two people that are banned from like my YouTube comments and on the Facebook groups and things that I'm the admin for. We've maybe had to get rid of four or five people over time. Like it's very, very rare. So they're probably the, uh, the the first category that I don't sort of tend to. The the you suck haters, so the next category down from the, the real sort of up there, the, the you suck haters are people that are, I don't know, they, they want to be negative towards things without really having a whole bunch of reasons. So I'll give you an example. Some people will be like, ah, oh, I... I yeah, you know, this music sucks. How like singer songwriter music is terrible, man. You should be listening to EDM, or you should be creating some rap beats, or whatever. So that sort of feedback is is interesting because um, a lot of music stuff is opinion based. So a lot of stuff is what you actually think and how you actually um, how you perceive your music and and what you're actually into. So to say I don't like that is absolutely fine but it's not really helping it's not i mean you could say you could do this better or i I would prefer this music but the the first question is what are you doing listening to a song that is by an artist that is not the sort of music that you like and then what gives you the reason to then actually comment on it afterwards it's a little bit strange but the the way i tend to respond to these is to just go back and say oh yeah thanks for that um uh, yeah, and, and just say, thank you for that. Is, is there anything that you think I could do better? So I sort of push it back. If they say, you suck, this sucks, music's bad. Um, the question is, well, what could I actually do to improve it? And the, the thing that I like to do is to always thank people for their feedback because it does mean that they are at least listening. So if someone doesn't like something and they've taken the time to actually tell you, unless they are just that personal attack kind of troll that we talked about to start with, then maybe they do actually have some valid point. And that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned about this in recent times is that quite often, even people that don't position their feedback very well, um, they do have a valid point and they do have something to actually say. Um, goodbye to Cool Klein. Thank you for joining me. Sorry, I was late on the stream here today, um, but thank you for, for dropping by and uh, and saying hello. Um, and the, the third type of hater that uh, we have is probably the most common one, which is the well-meaning hater. And this is someone that doesn't, even really necessarily know that they're probably not 
positioning feedback as appropriately as they should. Um, and again, they, they definitely do deserve some response and some feedback. And, and some of my, uh, the best feedback I've got is from people that are in that sort of category. So the example I'll give you there is, uh, I tend to rant a little bit, in case you hadn't noticed, I tend to talk a lot and uh, and chat about uh, things and, and take a long time to say things. So uh, on a video recently, um, I had a, a comment that said, it was something like this, it was, um, oh, go through to eight minutes 15 in the video where he actually starts doing something and i'm like oh man that yeah this is obviously someone that, that's that's got something to say and that's perhaps well-meaning so i'm like oh how do i respond to this so i actually watched the video and i'm like watching it going oh wow man this is uh yeah this is taking a long time for me to actually get to the point so i said to him oh yeah th thanks for the feedback um y you know what you're right you're spot on. Um, I did take too long on this. I am working on this. I'm trying to reduce the, the length and, and get to the point more quickly. Um, did you find the video useful? And then sort of asking a follow-up question, they went, oh, actually, yeah, it was it was a really useful video. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I was able to get the message through and I was able to, I guess, turn around someone that potentially wasn't liking what I was doing. Um, and I think once people... The, the key to this is that once people realize that you're a, a human and when you're putting music out there or whether you're putting videos out there or whether you're putting posts on social media, I think as soon as you humanize that, and that's why I think the, you know, the hug your haters thing is, uh, is the, the wording that was used in the book that I read and, and the wording that I use here is that, yeah, once you actually add some humanity and go, yeah, this is the person behind the screen, behind the keyboard, then people are like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe this is a real person and maybe I do need to, to treat them a little bit differently. Um, and yeah, and Pong Katie says, I do ramble a lot. Yeah, I know. It's very weird because I, as a child, I didn't actually talk very much and uh, I'm not quite a quiet, reserved sort of person. But uh, yeah, when it, when it comes to talking music and things that I'm passionate about, I do tend to talk a lot, which I think is cool. Uh, let me check my notes here. So when, when I was sort of going through this and thinking about it, uh, I was thinking in terms of music and you folks who are producing music, because that's what uh, I'm all about and what I'm, I'm trying to help you folks do here. So what is what are the types of different responses that you can give back to someone that is hating on you or that is giving you negative feedback? And what is the possible outcome? So <laughs> so number one is, uh, is to respond in turn. So this is where you would do the exact opposite of hug your haters. I guess you would flame your flavors. <laughs> so starting a flame war. So if someone says, hey, this sucks, man. And you're like, oh yeah, well, I just listen to your music and your music sucks too. Um, I've never actually seen that end well. I don't know if anyone else has any other experiences, but whenever I've uh, seen that happen or the very few times where I've responded to negative comments with negative comments or trying to be a bit... Um, try to be a bit smart, it, it just doesn't work because you know what, the two, two things are going to happen here is that other people are going to see the way you respond to that, people that are your supporters and that are trying to help you and be constructive with your music and then they're going to go, oh, okay, that person, you, is no better than the person that made the initial comment. That's, that's bad to start with. If you do get a response, it's going to be negative and then you're going to be forced to like go into another negative response and, and try to try to just to start this flame war again, which is not really going to work. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just not going to be something that's going to be enjoyable for you unless you actually enjoy that. And look, some people must because why do these things happen? Why, why are there these Mac versus PC flame wars? Why are there Google Android versus iPhone flame wars that, that go on online? I don't know. I'm not involved with it and I don't definitely don't want to start it about my own content and my own music and my own uh, videos. So that's sort of number one. One that I do like that's a bit of a subset of that is a bit of an amusing comeback. Um, so I tend to do that with someone who, uh, put, especially if someone puts a comment out there that's just ridiculous nonsense, um, I'll sort of fire back with some, I'll, I'll thank them. I'll say, hey, thanks for taking the time to, to comment on this. And then I'll sort of make a joke. As long as the joke is not at their at them, so not making fun of them, but sort of making fun of the situation. So someone put a comment this week, um, I can't remember the exact wording, but they were like, ah, oh, uh, it was one of my videos where I explained the difference between a USB mixer and a USB interface, and they put a comment along the lines of, you're like a, a big friendly wombat who talks about audio um and they put like records in a good way and i'm like um i could i could take offense to being called a big i guess a big friendly wombat is okay um so instead i went to wikipedia and i got the definition of a wombat and it is uh what is it it's like a, a short-legged muscular marsupial who is native to australia and i'm like you know what i tick most of those boxes except probably not quite the muscular but i'm definitely uh short-legged and uh, reside in Australia. So yeah, I think having a bit of fun with things like that can actually be good and can just sort of lower the tone a bit. And again, 
the good thing about that is it shows other people that you have a sense of humor and you're not taking things too seriously. Um, the follow-up question is something that I really love. Um, so if someone says, yep, your music's terrible, it sucks, then saying, um, really? Oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying really hard to get this good. What is the, what's the one thing or what's the biggest thing that you think I could do differently to improve this song? Or what would you suggest that I change to make this better? So pushing back, responding to feedback with a question, I think is probably one of the best tips. And that's something that I throw out there to folks who are new to music, who are getting a little bit down on that. Like don't, if someone says that wasn't good, don't just accept that and go, oh, okay, thank you. I'll just go away and stop recording music now, shall I? Um, asking follow-up questions. And, and we as, as humans, we don't love hearing negative stuff, especially about something that we've put our heart and soul into. But if you do, if you have the brave, if you can be brave and ask the follow-up question, then it can actually help you out. Uh, redirection is another thing. So if someone's sort of off the track and talking about something else, and this is where I, I use that comment about um, if someone says, hey, that was you know, you're a bad person or they make a comment about my appearance or about the hats I wear, um, I'll respond with, thanks, for, thanks for, for taking the time to provide feedback. Uh, what did you think of the video? Or what did you think that I got to the point of what I needed to do in the video here? And then basically removing it and, and bringing it back around. And then making sure that you're appreciative and that you actually say thank you to feedback. I know it sounds weird. Uh, I know the whole sub topic here is hug your haters and you're like, if someone's hating on you, why would you want to be nice to them? Um, but more often than not, they're having a worse day than you. Like genuinely, people that have got negative things to say, people, I was talking to my wife about this yesterday. I was like, I'm doing this on my show. What, what What's your view? What do you think um, is the deal with haters? Like, why are they doing this? Why do they go out of their way to do this? And she made a very good point, which is that, they probably have way more time than they have things to do. Like the very fact that they are trolling the internet, finding things to comment on and trying to start flame wars with people about their content or their appearance or anything, it probably means that they don't, they've got a few uh, things happening in their life that are not exactly ideal. So uh, not that I should, not that you should pity people because there's no excuse for that sort of behavior. But yeah, it's an interesting thought that perhaps uh, the folks are, are, are struggling a bit. And I've actually said that to someone <laughs> during the week. They just made this heinous, horrible comment. Um, and I just went back to them and with, um, I'm really sorry to hear that. You must have some, some tough things going on in your life. I hope it gets better for you. And hopefully it didn't sound like I was trying to be, you know, a bit facetious, but um, yeah, I, I just, I genuinely thought, wow, there's, there's, there's a few screws loose with this person and, and I hope they get the help they need because that's not what normal humans interact with other humans like. So anyway, that, that's sort of what I wanted to get to because um, I think I needed to talk about this for myself because uh, uh, in the last week in particular, one of my videos, the one I was talking about with the mixer versus interface, for some reason is just getting viewed and commented on continuously. Uh, majority of which are positive, but there's definitely been some folks, uh, I think it's kind of the, the, the rule is that as soon as you, you, your music gets out to a, more than like 100 people or your video gets out to more than 100 people, because 98, 99% of people are good, uh, as soon as you get to that ability for 1% to be one person, then you're going to suffer from these sort of things. So I guess that was my point here today is that don't be discouraged by the haters, um, but also make sure that you are trying to listen to them where you can because more often than not, you'll actually get at least some little nugget of information and something that may actually help uh, your music or whatever you're trying to produce uh, in the long run. Mm. All right, sorry, I've, uh, I've missed out on the chat here. And uh, yes, I will jump back here and see what people have had to say. So, um, uh, yep, right back here. Do, 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 do. Um, okay, so thank you to, we've got Blaze Reeves here, who says much respect uh, and been sharing your videos all over my Facebook and Twitter. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it, sir. That is awesome. Um, do I have a Discord server? I don't uh, at the moment. Um, it's something I've been thinking about. I haven't honestly had enough folks that have wanted to be chatting to actually have a Discord server. For those who don't know, a Discord server is a, a server, like a chat room. It's kind of like, an, I kind of like it because it's an old school sort of Yahoo chat style chat room that I used to use when I was a teenager back in the uh, long, long ago. Um, so I haven't actually got anything like that set up as yet, but um, I'll definitely consider it. So if folks would be interested in having a chat in a Discord server, let me know. Uh, Punk80 says the struggles uh, we face are there to get us to become better to deal with these kinds of situations. Absolutely. Um, and musicians hate feedback. Yes, yeah, so I think that was in response to when I was talking about um, yeah, musicians not liking feedback about that. And look, at it, it is tough. If you're a musician, you know what it's like. You've put your heart and soul into this stuff and then someone you know in one word says 
yeah, you suck. And you're like, oh, really? Um, yeah, I just spent like four days like writing that one line of vocals and now you tell me it sounds horrible. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I've got a question there from Rahul, which I will come back to uh, in a moment about uh, tempo. And then um, I do ramble a lot, yes, which I, I know. Um, <laughs> and thank you to, uh, to to Leonard Higgins, who says he loves my rants. Thank you, sir. Um, Jose Flores is in the house, and uh, excellent. Great to see you here. Um, someone who I love reading your comments, sir, every time you comment on a video. Brilliant. And uh, Darren Bryant, um, you can do everything right and still have haters. Um, and I say thank you and God bless. Have a nice day. That pretty much sums it up. So I'm going to use that as the closing of this topic because I think I couldn't say it any better than Darren has said it there. Thank you. God bless. Have a nice day. Um, yeah. And, and that's kind of my point is that get the value you can out of it. If you think asking a follow-up question is good, do that. But at the end of the day, thank you. God bless. And, and very few that I've ever come and I just said I'm going to finish and then I keep ranting. Um, very few people have actually come back the second time around um, because... I never go back with the, the flamey type comment. So I never actually feed the trolls. That's the words I'm looking for. So don't feed the trolls. We've got Mr. Benedict Stewart. Uh, hug your haters next song, maybe. Maybe indeed. Yeah, that, that could be uh, an option for the, the next track. Uh, all about hug your haters. I do, I do tend to do that. I do tend to weave in what's happening in my head and what's happening in my life into my song. So uh, uh, yeah, that, that could be. That could be a song all about trolls and how to... Uh, deal with your haters. Um, that's a pretty good idea. And we've got Mr. Danny Elliott on board here. So uh, I think that a lot of the negative feedback on YouTube is from trolls. Yeah, trolls are very common. They they unfortunately are. And I was just talking before Danny about why that is. And yeah, I, I'm, it's, it doesn't make me feel great about uh, society. And, and again, it, it's weird. Like I used to work in customer service. Yeah, I'm going to go off on a tangent and then I promise we'll talk about another topic. Um, I used to work in customer service and uh, I used to be a leader in customer service. And a lot of folks uh, that were in my team would come to me and say, oh my God, the customers are so bad. Every single customer's got a problem. And what I would say is, how many customers do you think this company has? And they'd be like, oh, I don't know. I'd be like, well, we have about 2 million customers. And how many customers do you think call us and complain every day? And they're like, um, I don't know. And it's like, it's about half a percent. <laughs> like over a year, less than 1% of our overall customer base actually call and have a problem. 99% of them are good. The problem is, you only hear from the ones that have a problem. And that's kind of what it's like with haters on the internet. 99% of people, awesome people, here to do the right thing, want to help each other, great humans. The 1% of people, and probably less than 1%, it's probably more like 0.1% of people uh, that aren't, um, yeah, they just tend to stick out. They stick in your mind and they're the ones that have the negative things to say. So uh, that, that's the way I look at it in terms of uh, comparisons there. All right. <clears throat> let's get into something else. Now, I had a question up here, which I'll return to, which was Rahul. So how to use a different part, different tempo. Yeah. So this is a rough one. Um, I know my friend here, Ponk80, who is a, I'm assuming you're talking about GarageBand because that's what I talk about a lot of the time. Um, yeah, being able to adjust your tempos in GarageBand is something that has been asked for a lot by different people. It is not possible, on the iOS version at least, it is not possible at the moment. You can only set one tempo for the whole song. And same with your time signature. You can only have one time signature. So what a lot of folks have done is that they use, um, you know, I've done this on songs before, where you can use parts of different time signatures by basically just recreating your own metronome. So you have a 4-4 four, four beat, and if you wanted 5-4 four or 3-4 four for a few bars, you basically just recreate your own beat. Um, so that's one way to do it um, for that. But the actual tempo thing, the only way, and it's very clunky, um, that I've known people to do this is to actually... Uh, record it in one project and then record the other tempo part in another project, then open up a third project and bring those two in and add them to the end of the other one. Yeah, really not a great solution. Um, so I've never actually done it, but other folks uh, have done that when I've asked about multiple tempos. So it's unfortunate. Um, perhaps it's something that will be coming in a future version. I know a lot of people are asking about it, but I guess uh, GarageBand really wants to push things towards the, the simple way. And as soon as you add in multi-time signatures and multiple uh, tempos, it's probably not going to be simple anymore. So sorry, that's, uh, yeah, that is one of the things that a lot of people ask me about. And maybe I need to do a video on the fact that you, that you can't. Similar to, I, I did 
did a video on the fact that you can't get GarageBand on a Windows PC because I was getting asked by so many people about, hey, how do I download GarageBand on Windows? How do I get GarageBand to work on my, on my laptop that's not Mac? And I just eventually had to go, you can't. And here's the video telling you that you can't and here's all the reasons why you can't. So uh, maybe I need to do that with Tempo because it is a pretty common question. Um, so Darren Bryan, uh, thanks for sharing the link to Dan Baker's page. Uh, between you both, I might figure this GarageBand thing out. Yeah, no worries. Yes, yeah, so I, I did during the week. I shared, and, and I'll ask about this in a moment. During the week, I shared um, a link to Dan Baker, who's an outstanding mu musician and has some really, really good videos and content about GarageBand, but also about a bunch of other stuff. He's a he's an actual real professional musician, so he knows a lot more stuff than I do. So I actually learn a lot of things, a lot of music theory and a lot of recording things from Dan because he's a genuine, uh, legitimate musician. So uh, Dan is the man, um, and I'm working on a song with him at the moment, which I'm, I'm still working to mix. It's taken me a really long time. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> uh, Barry Smith, when do you think you're going to put out a master it's a on there so everyone could master day track all in one when do you think they're going to put a master effect on there so everyone could master track all in one. Oh, so you're talking a master track on GarageBand yeah this is one that uh, is number one on my list I, I did a um a video and actually Patrick Baird from the GarageBand guide did a similar video as well um more recently but I did a video probably six months ago about um about the top 10 features I'd like to see in GarageBand. In fact, I'll, I'll try and find it now um, and I'll link it here in the chat and hopefully remember to link it afterwards. Um, it was like GarageBand features. Sorry, you're going to hear the clicky clicky keys for just a moment while I find this. Um, GarageBand iOS feature wish list. So yeah, this is the sort of top 10 things that I want to see in GarageBand and I'm, I haven't reviewed it for a while. So maybe that's something that I should do. Um, let's just pop it here. I don't know why I'm popping it here because I'm just encouraging you to go away and watch a different video <laughs> instead of watching the live stream. Um, but this is the video where I actually went through that and I'm pretty sure the number one thing that I said there, I'll just check my notes here, was um, a master track. Yes, it was number one. So being able to mix down to a master track and add effects on the master bus was the number one thing I thought I would want. Um, the other things here, I'm going to, total spoiler alert, the other things I wanted were performance management options so that you didn't get optimizing performance all the time, better file management, better collaboration tools to make it easy to collaborate with other users, um, track grouping and folders I thought would be cool, uh, track templates so you don't have to start with a blank, you can actually have a template that has your, your basic settings in there, uh, export options, um, so being able to export as videos with visualizations to Facebook and YouTube I thought was cool, um, automation for panning and effects, so not just automation on the volume but on other things as well, uh, effect sends, so to be able to send and receive effects between different uh, tracks, better guitar samples oh do we need to talk about the guitar in garage band my goodness they have not fixed they have not updated the tone of those garage of those guitars like ever so yeah we need better guitars and then the master track was number one so uh take a look at that video uh if you haven't um like i said i've linked it there i'll try to link it in the notes afterwards but if you just search my name pete john's garage band features uh it will pop up and you can check that out and let me know let me know here if there's other features that you think we should be getting. Um, there is a rumor that there's going to be a big version in December um, of GarageBand, but uh, I haven't seen or heard anything. But then again, Apple do tend to just do things and then drop them on us. So perhaps that will be happening at some stage soon. Um, is there a way to do any kind of palm muting on guitar and GarageBand, or do you just have to record real guitar? Um, yeah, you just have to record real guitar. Uh, yeah, the, the, there's a few of the samples that are kind of a muted guitar sample and what I've done in the past where I've wanted, say, yeah, a muted guitar or a power chord of a guitar because you can, you can do it with the GarageBand guitar to play chords and things, but they just don't sound great. So I've used um, sounds, like I've grabbed loops and I've grabbed uh, sounds from things like freesounds.org, um, which I did a video on recently where you can actually download a wave sample and then bring it into your project. So I tend to do things more like that, but no, uh, to my knowledge, um, unlike that, which is weird because with the strings, you can do the, you can hold down and do the pluck. I, I should know what that is, pizzicato, there you go. You can do pizzicato on the strings, but I don't think you can do muted guitars, not sure. Um, and Leonard Higgins, Higgy Drums, did you see the last few covers and originals I did? Uh, mate, I have been so slack in terms of watching and listening to music. I have been flat out this week. 
Luckily, it is the weekend now. I have some more time and I have a little bit of time off of from the day job over Christmas. So I am definitely going. I've got to create my own music, but I definitely have to listen to other folks' music as well because I haven't done enough of it and I need to listen to more music. You all produce amazing music and I need to spend more time listening to it for sure. And welcome back to Punk 80. Thanks for, for being here. For those folks on the live stream, I really do appreciate it. And again, apologies for being late. For those watching on the replay, thank you to you too. I hope you're finding this interesting. And uh, yeah, if you do have any questions that I don't get to in the live stream, leave them in the comments. I read all the comments. I'm, I'm pretty big in my comment section. As we talked about the whole hug your haters thing, it's, I see every single comment. I don't necessarily respond to everyone if they're really horrible, but I do respond to probably 99% of all comments that are there. Um, so drop a comment with your question and then on the next live stream, I can uh, collect those up. That's where a lot of the ideas for what I talk about each week come from is the comments from the last week. Alrighty, so I was talking briefly about gear versus creating music. So this week being the Halloween, not Halloween, what is it? Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving, uh, the f f f f Friday, what do they call it? Cyber Monday and Black Friday. Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So um, a lot of people are buying things. And look, I, I jumped on the bandwagon a little tiny bit in that I, um, I wanted to um, not necessarily promote and, and you know, sell a bunch of products, but that look that, that is part of it. I do have affiliate links for the the products that I have, um, but I wanted to get some videos out there about gear because I, I try to keep the ratio like at about 80% music creation and only about 20% gear um, because I just think it's uh, yeah it's, it's a better option. Um, but yeah, I, I did have a lot of questions from people wanting to know about audio interfaces, about microphones and about MIDI interfaces and things. So over the last week, I have produced a few different um, a few different videos about that. Um, so yeah, so I, I wanted people's opinions. Um, my apologies, I do have to uh, just go away for one second. I'm going to uh, bring up this. Um, no, no, it's not going to work. Oh, no, I think I'm okay. Sorry, I, I was having some technical difficulties there, and it may the stream may drop out. In fact, I may need to end the stream early here. I'm really sorry about this. Um, I'll see if I can get through this, but I think I'm having a few internet connection, connectivity issues here. Um, what was I talking about? Gear, gear versus music. So yeah, um, I did do a few, and, and someone actually said to me, they're like, uh, I thought we were coming here to, to make music, or, or once, you, you know, once you've done all this gear review, are you going to actually get back to music? So hopefully the ratio is right, but let me know if you think that um, I'm doing too much about the gear, if, it, if you think it's distracting, or if you don't think it's relevant. But um, I think it is. It is about having the basic level of right gear that you, you need, but then what you actually do with it is definitely a heap more important. So um, understanding about what a microphone is, what an audio interface is, what you can do with a MIDI keyboard, I think those are all important things. But then actually being able to turn that into good music is uh, is definitely number one. Um, so yeah, if, if you think um, if you think that the, the ratio is not quite right, then definitely let me know. And, and <laughs> another thing that I wanted to ask about, which I'll, I'll ask quickly before everything falls away here. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to ask about is that um, YouTube have a community tab now. And, and someone actually mentioned that I, I shared Dan Baker's uh, video and channel earlier in the week. Um, and I've shared some other things. That, so uh, make sure that you keep me honest on that. I don't want to use that a whole heap. I think it's useful. Um, so if you think... If you think I'm overdoing it, then make sure you let me know and say stop sharing random things that are not relevant, Pete. Um, but I actually enjoy it. So I like seeing what other creators are doing behind the scenes. I like seeing sort of those insights and things that they're doing. I like knowing the sort of videos and content that they're watching because maybe it can turn me on to something that's a bit different and, and that I didn't know about. So um, yeah, let me know about that. So that was a, a slight aside. Um, but yeah, I think um, making sure that we are focused on the music because gear is important, but... Um, I think a lot of people, and I ranted on this a week ago, but I think a lot of people say, oh, I need to level up my game, so I'm going to get a better computer. I'm going to get a better iPad. I'm going to get a better microphone, better interface, better keyboard. And the thing I say to that is make sure that you've reached the limitations of what you have. So, um, and I, I do, I, I say it at the start of a lot of my gear videos where I'm like, you know, this is something that you can do if you want to improve your vocals, if you want to improve your, um, your audio quality, 
if you're at the point where your songwriting isn't at the level where you need that extra quality, then use use the microphone on your iPad or your iPhone. Use your headset microphone. I still record some vocals and other things with just my headset microphone. And it's absolutely fine. It gives you a great sound. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to sort of put that out there because I, whilst it is part of what I do here is to promote products, um, I don't get paid by the companies, but I do get paid an affiliate revenue if someone clicks a link and buys a product, which I am upfront and say in every single video. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want this to turn into the Pete's uh, gear recommendation show and every every video is just me pimping out some gear. Um, I want to make sure we do actual music creation as well because that, that is what I'm passionate about. Um, it just happens that you need to have some gear to actually do that with. Um, so yeah, I, I, if, if you've got any feedback and comments on that, definitely let me know um did, 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 did you oh so i've got some questions here did you use your samson powered speaker yet yeah i did um so i have the samson which is is it over there there it is yes it's there behind the behind the black guitar over there um it's the samson expedition something something which is the powered pa but i haven't i haven't done a follow-up review on that one um to actually show it, but I've got some people that have been very interested in that. So that's a wireless PA, and I actually used that at my uh, daughter's piano recital, um, which I actually played at, which I didn't actually say at the time, um, and it's an interesting segue. Uh, I, I do have video of me playing at it. I don't think I did particularly well, um, but if enough people ask me to, maybe I'll actually uh, maybe I'll actually publish a video where you show me playing live at a piano recital. It was a very weird thing. Um, so the kids played, it was a Christmas show, and then the piano teacher said, oh, you're a musician, would you want to come and, and play a song? And I'm like okay um and because i'd set up all the gear i'm like I'm, I'm testing the gear anyway so why not so yeah i, I played uh, and, and i used a it wasn't the the samson's fault that i wasn't that good i just uh, the, the levels weren't particularly right and the acoustics were in a church and it just didn't sound awesome um i didn't get time to sort of sound test and that sort of thing sound check so um yeah no so answer your question no i haven't actually uh i have used it but i haven't actually done a follow-up video on it as yet um so Barry Smith, I have the Focus Scala iTrack solo with the lightning cable, and how will I be able to hook that up into my Apple Camera 3 adapter to chart up my iPad? Um, the iTrack solo with a lightning cable. Oh, with the lightning cable. Oh, so to chart, yeah. So this is the problem. Um, the, I, I have had this question, and this is actually a good one that I'll, I'll, uh, I'll note and probably do a video about, because... People that are using the, the the lightning connections, so a lightning interface as opposed to a USB. Um, you can't use something like, I don't have it handy here, but the USB 3 uh, lightning adapter, um, You can't, which you can charge your device at the same time as connect a USB device. There's kind of nothing for lightning. So if you've got the iTrack solo or if you've got a, an iRig, you can't, there's no like double adapters for lightning ports, which, uh, yeah, which makes things a bit difficult. So... Um, I think there's some aftermarket things that are sold that profess to do that where you can actually connect up because it's the same sort of thing if, if you want to yeah, use lightning headphones and then charge and, and any lightning device and charge. So yeah, uh, unfortunately, I don't think you'll be able to uh, do that. Um, but if someone knows that, then definitely let me know. Um, Pong Katie says, I like the GarageBand videos more. Yep, uh, that is that is cool. And, and I do, I do do a lot of GarageBand videos, but I also want to expand it out and have some things. Um, yes. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, Higgy says, I like it, keep sharing everything, and Higgy says, post as well. So I'm assuming that's in my community tab. Um, would you be up for a sampler song challenge, this is Pong Katie, where you would use only the sampler and built-in microphone? Yeah, so uh, Dan Baker did that during the week, and it was awesome, and I don't think I could do anything anywhere near as good. So maybe, maybe I need to do something like that, but maybe not. Um, all righty. Um, I am going to have to finish up the stream here, folks. I apologize for the delayed start and then the early finish, but uh, that is just how things roll sometimes. As I said, uh, life can get in the way a little bit sometimes, and uh, so can technology. We love technology um, and couldn't do what I do without it, but uh, yeah, it can definitely be a little bit challenging at times. So that is going to do it for this uh, stream. If you've got any comments or questions, uh, feel free to leave those in the comments of this video. Thank you again for watching and for all of your participation and all of your questions. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you next time around.